The United States Senate was supposed to vote today on reforming filibuster obstruction of voting rights. But there is no vote today. About two weeks back, Democratic leader Schumer laid out the case to adapt to what he called historic challenges to secure free and fair elections and vowed a high-stakes vote to change Senate rules on or before January 17th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Now, Schumer and Biden have never made such a big push before, and it was greeted then as big news to pressure those last Democratic holdouts. Here we are on the, on the cusp of, 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 of recognizing uh, the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., and we're still grappling with the issues of nullification and voter suppression. I hope Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema uh, understand the seriousness of this. On or before MLK Day, that's within two weeks. And the connection is deliberate. I think uh, Chuck is going to put the bill on the floor and he's going to put extreme pressure on Joe and Kirsten. Schumer, by going public that way, was supposed to invoke today's holiday to put that, quote, extreme pressure on Manchin and Cinema. Either Democrats could win rallying MLK Day and base pressure to get to 50 or in a loss, they could make those holdouts take this hard vote on the ultimate voting rights holiday, a day when more people and their own Democratic constituents might notice. That was the political threat. And yet here we are. There is no vote today, with Schumer backing off and signaling debate starting tomorrow on these voting rights bills and arguing that a vote today turned out to be too difficult, with one Democrat out under COVID and also the bad weather. But here's the thing. Senator Sinema loudly reiterated she's against reforming the filibuster, so Schumer doesn't have 50 votes anyway. The whole issue for today was whether this was a real threat, to do the vote today for real, or a kind of an empty threat with a moving deadline. Now, it's not just about Chuck Schumer. It's about something that anyone who follows Democratic politics is familiar with, the gap between top Democrats claiming filibuster reform is key to democracy itself and the future of the entire Biden presidency, and then not really acting like it and not executing on a fairly standard piece of political hardball, which they claim they would deploy two weeks ago. Now, people can debate the efficacy of this Schumer MLK plan, but it was his plan, and he did back off. And for Democrats concerned that party leaders don't fight as hard as the other side time and time again, who feel like they've seen this movie before, well, another president did once talk about this kind of dynamic. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. Close, it's actually fool me twice, shame on me. And that's how some are feeling watching this routine. Now, proportion matters. It is still overwhelmingly Republicans, not Chuck Schumer, that are responsible for the actual filibustering of these civil rights bills. And it's Republicans who won't consider even treating the voting rights carve-out like they do nominations or spending policies, which are not magically subject to this filibuster obstruction. But when it comes to Democrats vowing more hardball than they are willing to actually enact, some activists may start to feel like Jay Cole's famous call for retribution— Fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, forget the peace signs, let it rain on you. There may be no easy answers given how the Senate works, but many are demanding a level of change that goes beyond rescheduling the supposed tough votes.